Hello everyone. Today I am going to share with you some French country inspiration using some of the new IOD products. There will also be a bonus DIY using some of the primitive molds towards the end. But first we're going to start off with this planter. Full disclosure, I did spray this with clear matte by Rust-Oleum beforehand. It's just a habit for me. However, the DIY clay-based paints do adhere to most surfaces. So I pulled out a paint I haven't used in a while, and this is called Skeleton Key. It is such a beautiful grayish blue color. And you can see right away how amazing the coverage with this paint is. There are those beautiful red hearts on there, and with one coat, it completely covers those up. Now on the edges, I feel like it needed one more coat, but you can see, like you cannot see those hearts on that planter whatsoever. But I do need to paint the bottom and I did do a second coat because around the corners, I felt like you could still see that like creamy color peeking through. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Then we're gonna grab these beautiful stamps from IOD. This is a part of their new summer collection. And I love that they come on a clear film. That way you can hold it up to your projects and kind of see you know, if it fits, if it's, where you want it to be. And I'm gonna use this angel. However, I'm only gonna use part of her. And that is what is also amazing about the stamps. That I scuffed up the stamp because it was my first time using. So I am only gonna partially use this angel. And I'm gonna use most of her body and then the right side of her wing and have fun with your stamps, you guys. Just because they come one way doesn't mean you have to use them that way. Then on the other side, the opposite side of the planter, I'm gonna do the same exact image here. And I'm just holding down with one hand, pressing down with the other. Now, I wanted to put something on the other sides, but I was like, I don't want to put the flowers that I was thinking. So what I thought I would do is take the angel and basically wrap it around the planter. So you can see I'm holding it around that edge and then I like roll it on to the other side. And now it looks cohesive. It looks like the image has wrapped around the planter and you guys look at how detailed this is. How do they do this? I do not know, but these stamps are absolutely mind blowing. So because I want somebody to have the option of using this as a planter, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this with Big Top versus a wax. The Big Top is gonna give it more of a durable finish versus the wax. Now keep in mind when using your Big Top, it is gonna change the color of your paint. It's gonna darken it up a little bit. It's also going to give it a little bit of a satin finish. If you want a matte finish, use your Crystal Clear Liquid Patina. After that is completely dry, y'all, this is how it turned out. Look at how beautiful that is. I think the planter initially cost me $2.99 and I turned it into some beautiful French country decor and I love it. You guys, those silver candlesticks are also available on my website, unicorndustdesigns.com, as well as all the paint products you see in today's video. All right, for the next couple ones, we are gonna use faded burlap. How this is like, most people don't buy this, I don't know, because you'll see as it dries down, it's stunning. So I'm using my perfectionist brush and I love using it for things with details. It has a point at the end of it. So it gets really good into those corners and to any detailed surfaces. So if you do a lot of detailed projects, I highly recommend this brush and it just got restocked on my website. So I'm gonna do two coats of this paint. I did shellac this beforehand. And I did that because it never fails with metal um, DIY projects or flips. The tannins and stuff come through so bad. So I did take this out. I shellacked it very, very heavy. And then I am taking this and I am going to obviously paint over it. Now, after I give it a second coat, I'm gonna take one of the new IOD paint inlays and I'm just gonna find my placement 
on my board. I'm going to need to do a third uh, layer of paint. I'm all, what am I talking about here? But before I do that, I wanted to mark off where I want this to lay. So I'm marking where my center point is, and then I'll put two additional um, pieces of tape on the side so I know where I want that image. So here we go, you guys. I am getting the paint. I am putting a good layer of paint on, but I'm not doing a crazy heavy coat. And I don't usually do my paint inlays this way. I usually do them with a clear coat, but you know what? I was going for it. So I do my coat of paint and then I spritz it with some water. I lay that paint inlay down and I smooth it out with my finger first. Then I'm going to get my mister bottle. I'm gonna mist over that get a paper towel and press that image down into my paint. And you wanna make sure that it's really good and down because you want it to infuse with that paint. Now you're going to wait until this is completely dry. Then you're gonna spritz it with water once again, pat it with that paper towel, wait about 15 seconds, and you're gonna peel it back. Now. The transfer itself, the, the paint inlay came out beautiful, but do you see all of those wrinkles the paper left? Can you say driving me insane? This is where I, I'm like, okay, this is not, like, I don't know if I could fix this. So I tried to take some fine grit sandpaper. I tried sanding over, you guys know, I don't even like brush strokes in my items. So this was driving me insane and I, that didn't work. And then I was like, okay, let's move on, do something else. So I took pedal pusher and I took some water and almost created like a watercolor. I wanted to bring the details out on this tray, but I didn't want to go in with a, a, a wax. I didn't want it to be dark. I didn't want white on there. And then I was like, pedal pusher looks exactly like the blue in the paint inlay. So I just mixed it with water. I put it on my tray and then I pat the excess off with a paper towel and dry it after each time of putting it on. And the reason I'm doing it in steps, so you can see how it settled into those details, is because I you wanna dry it after because you don't want that to drip down and go different places. Then you guys, I'm still on this. I'm like, how can I take the eye off of that wrinkly mess that's happening in the middle, okay? So then I kind of do a shadow around and it looks so pretty, you guys. This is how it looks matte. Look at how beautiful that is. But then, you guys, oh, I, I don't know if I kept like just trying too hard, but I applied the big top to it because in my opinion, I'm like, this is a tray. I want it to be durable, so I'm gonna do the big top instead. Well, we know the big top makes your paint a darker color. So right then and there, it changed the whole look for me personally. I loved the matte finish of the faded burlap. And then you guys, it made that, um, that wrinkly, look it, it made it stand out so much more. Like you could totally see where the paper lines were and everything. So then I tried putting this crackle stamp on it, you guys. Did I fix it? Or is this just a mess? You let me know in comments. It's okay, I won't be offended. Um, I think it came out for the most part beautiful, but you guys know me. And I feel like that is very distinct in the middle with the paper. And some people are okay with that. But for me, I would rather it like blend in versus be like, oh, there, there's a big square in the middle, rectangle in the middle, you know? But I do love that watercolor technique in all of those details. Look at those claw feet, oh my gosh, love it. And you guys, I'm getting all of my IOD products from Bonda at paintedheirloom.com and her link is in the description box. Now we're doing a wood round. I'm gonna paint the entire front with faded burlap, a very messy coat. Look at how beautiful this color dries down. Oh, it rocks my world. All right, now we're taking um, another patina. 
This is called Old and Gray Barnwood Patina. You can use all liquid patinas, except clear, I don't know why you would want to, but you can use them as wood stains, decoupage mediums, top coats, and glazes. So you get a lot of different uses out of these. So I am doing this on the back. I want it to look finished because this is gonna turn into a tray. And then I wipe the excess off as I go. Liquid patina dries super fast, so you have to work fast with it. Then I like flip it around and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna put the liquid patina in all of the places where the raw wood shows. And then whatever ex excess I had on my brush, I kind of like dusted it around those spots. And at first I was digging it, you know, but then I was like the spots, the, the heavy distressing I did was too heavy. So I took it outside and I sanded it. So you can see it looks a little smoother, a little lighter, but me, uh, I'll fix that later. So then I take Big Top and we're gonna try the paint transfer using the clear coat method versus the paint. And I've done this a couple times and it usually works out pretty well for me versus the paint because you don't see as much of that wrinkling of the paper. So I do it in sections. I press down my image and you guys, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna spritz it with some water, pat it, then once it dries, we spritz it with water again, peel it back. So you can see my image did not transfer all the way. And that is because this wood round was really rough. Even though I sanded it, it was rough and it didn't lay flat on there, but that was okay because it made it look older. Then you guys, Everett and I were downstairs and I could not hang with the dark patches. So I ended up getting my crackle stamps from IOD and I placed it in those heavy patches I made and then did the finer crackle around the whole thing. And I have to say, you guys, I was really hard on myself with these projects and Everett was downstairs with me and he was like, mom, you are so talented. I, I can't believe you make this stuff. And it really just made me feel so good. And that like made, that made my, my day and all of these projects totally worth it. So after waiting overnight, I take Big Top and I'm going to clear the front and the back. You want to at least wait an hour to uh, clear over a paint inlay or it will smear. So I'm going to clear the front, the back, and the sides. Now I'm going to take these beautiful handles I got from Hobby Lobby. Of course, they weren't 50% off. Of course, it wasn't the day, you know, but the flower details on the front were beautiful but the white was too stark for me. So I grabbed that faded burlap once again, and I'm just gonna do a messy coat on them. I don't care if some of the white's peeking through, but I did not want that pure white on the tray. So does anybody else, um, you know, I, I'm always running out of time, yet I choose the most random times to start things. I was like, mm, I think this uh, contact paper needs to come off and I need to put some new stuff on and I just start going at it. Did I finish it? No, look at it. <laughs> All right, so then I place my handles. I'm gonna put some screws in there. I prefer these handles versus the Hobby Lobby handles where the screw comes from underneath because they're always way too long. Now, I don't like those silver screws, so we're just gonna paint them faded burlap and top them with Big Top. And this is how our French country tray turned out. Let me know, comment with a flower if you're digging this tray because I, it was one of the, kind of like the other tray where I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this or not, but after I added the stamps, the crackling, I think it just like flowed with me and those handles are absolutely gorgeous. So I love how this one turned out. All right, you guys, the bonus DIY. I'm gonna take the primitive molds. I just had to try them out. And I'm gonna take this little tin thing. What, what do we call this? A pail? I don't know. So if you've never worked with molds before, you're gonna dust them with some cornstarch and this is gonna help release your clay after you, you're done and you want it to come out. So I'm gonna dust it and then I get the excess off. 
Now I'm going to take Doss Air Dry Clay. This is in my Amazon um, store. The link's in the description box. And you're going to put that in. Now what I love about the IOD molds, I have tried Prima's, but I like with the IOD molds, it has a little lip on it. I don't think it's called that, but I'm going to call it that. And it really helps you get that excess um, clay out without your mold um, lifting out with you. You know what I'm saying? So after I fill that all up, you just flip it on over, peel it back, and then you have your beautiful molds ready to go. So we are going to apply these to the front of our pail while they are still wet. And I'm just using my um, tight bond quick and thick. This adheres to any surface, does not have to be wood. I do think I put a little bit too much wood on some of these, or some glue on some of these pieces but I am taking a paintbrush so that I can smooth that all around. I don't like the wood glue on my finger. I do it sometimes, but it gets all cakey and weird. All right, and then what's nice about the mold, especially when they're wet, is that you can really put them in the position that you want. I did have a curved surface on the sides, and then I was able to really form this in the position I wanted it to be. And then I did the same thing on the opposite side of this as well. And then because I'm extra, I had to add more mold. I thought maybe it's gonna be too much, but <laughs> it's okay, guac, I'm extra too. So I'm gonna add the birds to the top. These molds, I really didn't think I was gonna be a fan of them because they're not really my style, but once I started using them, I felt like the possibilities of using them are endless. So you guys are going to pick uh, pick out, bring out the big boy, my salt wash. I haven't used this in a while. I do sell it on my website. I sell a 10 ounce, 42 ounce, and there's a starter kit, which comes with 10 ounce, a cup, two paintbrushes, and a lookbook. So really good value there. We are going to use Fancy Farm Girl. And you guys, I do have this back in stock on my website. We're going to pour some of that in a bowl. Put some salt wash in. Always start with a little because you could always add more. And I'm not gonna go totally ham on my salt wash like I usually do, like where it's super chunky. I want this kind of smooth. So I am going to start putting this on our pail and I'm doing a stippling effect here. I do wanna create some little peaks with my salt wash. And if some of you are like, what the heezy is salt wash? Salt wash is a paint additive and it's going to add texture to any surface. And whatever texture you form with like the peaks and the little ridges, that is what is going to stay. And let me tell you when it dries up, it is rock solid. So I am putting that on the pail. And if you guys are like, oh my gosh, you're gonna cover up all the detail of those molds. No, we are not, I promise you. When you go around those molds, you want to just brush the paint on. You don't want to stipple because if you stipple, you're gonna create those peaks and those ridges and that is what's gonna hide your details. So I'm just brushing it over the molds and I'm also keeping in mind that these molds are still wet. So you want to be gentle with them. Um, the glue is dry and they're not gonna shift, but if I pressed down on them hard enough, I would lose some of that detail. So you can see how I just kind of go on top of them pretty softly and then I keep on stippling around. You're going to let this completely dry and then because DIY paints are water soluble, before you clear it, you can clean up any kind of paint that you want. So you could see how I got a bunch on the inside of the pail, just took a baby wipe and I cleaned that up so it looks nice. Now taking that faded burlap, once again, obviously I was digging this color this video. I am just going to dry brush over all of that beautiful salt wash and our molds so that all of that texture and those details come back out. And salt wash, it, I love salt wash. I could use it on everything. Now after that, we are just gonna take some clear wax and we are gonna clear this entire piece and then it's ready to go. This will dry back down to a lighter color. And you guys check out how beautiful these molds turned out. 
Is that not stunning? Some of these items will be available on my website, unicorndeskdesigns.com. Remember, you could get the paint there. And thank you guys so much for spending your time with me. You know I appreciate you, and I'll see you back here on Tuesday for a dupe video. Yeah. <laughs> Very few people ever get in a position to be able to <laughs> 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 <laughs>